Woman claims to be royalty for 32 years. Then, a detective digs up the real story. In 1918, all seven members of the royal Romanov family, a mother, father, four daughters, and a son, were brutally murdered by communist revolutionaries. Their horrifying deaths left the world reeling, but it wasn't long before a tantalizing rumor started to spread. Perhaps the youngest daughter, Anastasia, had escaped. And when a woman named Anastasia Tchaikovsky claimed to be the lost duchess, it took decades for the twisted truth to come out. In 1928, a woman with sunken eyes and a crooked smile arrived in New York. It was clear that she didn't fit the traditional ideal of what royalty should be. And yet, when she spoke, she immediately gained the world's attention. I am the lost heir. I am the lost heir of the Romanov family, she announced. But instead of being greeted by gasps, the American press responded with skepticism. After all, she wasn't the first woman to claim to be the Grand Duchess Anastasia Romanov of Russia. In fact, in the ten years since the Romanov family was executed, at least six women, probably more, had come forward falsely claiming to be Anastasia. So when this tattered woman showed up in New York City, people couldn't help but scoff. They wanted proof that she was the real deal, something all those other imposters had always failed to do. If this woman really was the lost princess, she had to prove it, which she did by simply pointing to her jaw. She alleged that her jaw had been broken nearly ten years earlier when she made her escape from the communist soldiers who had murdered her entire family. The way she told this story was so genuine that people believed her, including someone from Anastasia's past. The man was Gleb Botkin, the son of the Romanov family's physician who was also murdered by the communist revolutionaries. Gleb had played with Anastasia as a child, and something mysterious about this woman made him believe her story. Gaining the support of Gleb Botkin, a respected member of high society, convinced the public that she was truly Anastasia. The fact that she was covered in scars, which she claimed to have gotten during the escape, only helped clinch the public's disbelief. She became known as Anna Anderson, the lost Grand Duchess and a fixture of New York high society. She was no longer tattered and pale, but wrapped up in expensive clothes, with access to the best products and services that money could buy. As she hopped from one luxurious hotel to the other, she met many Romanov relatives and former acquaintances of the Romanov family. Most were astounded with how much Anna resembled the young Anastasia once they knew. Others, however, weren't so easily convinced. Though she looked like Anastasia, she had trouble recalling certain details about her childhood, and her grasp on languages that Anastasia had been fluent in was shaky at best. But still, the lost Romanov, safe and sound in New York City? It was too amazing of a prospect to be fake. She had been through so much, endured such violence and trauma, that some degree of mental illness was to be expected. Anna spent three months at a time in the homes of society's most respected men and women. It didn't seem to matter that Anna's accent was decidedly German and that her behavior was erratic at best. People loved the idea of having Russia's Grand Duchess in their home. Inconsistencies aside, Anna's most ardent supporters all had one goal in mind, to have Anna's status as Grand Duchess Anastasia legally recognized. Doing so would have benefits that go beyond whatever fortune her family had left, a fortune eyed by many of her supporters. Anastasia's survival would also be a symbol to Russia's communist leaders of the strength and resilience of imperial Russia. These both sounded like great ideas to Anna and her supporters, and if one man hadn't intervened, things would have turned out much differently. The Grand Duke of Hesse, Anastasia's uncle, was one of the visiting relatives who doubted Anna's identity. To learn more about her, he hired a private investigator, and what the investigator uncovered left the Duke infuriated. The investigator made a startling claim. Anna, he said, was actually a woman named Franziska Szenskauza, and she didn't exactly have royal roots. Franziska was a Polish-German factory worker who had randomly disappeared in 1920. Francisca not only had a history of mental illness, 
but a 1916 factory explosion left her covered with scars, both physical and mental. These allegations about Anna made some ripples in the press, but they didn't amount to much, and Anna continued to be regarded as Anastasia. Not that the court system was quite ready to recognize her as such. Years passed, Anna lost multiple court cases about her identity, and it slowly but surely became public knowledge that Anna probably wasn't Anastasia. Still, people loved to watch her pretend. They loved it so much that a French play Anastasia debuted in 1954, followed by the 1956 film starring Ingrid Bergman. For decades, Anna tried to prove her royal status despite mounting doubts from the public. She died in 1984, seven years before the truth finally came out.